What's up guys, welcome back. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be building from scratch a brand new gaming room and a gaming PC setup using a set of different furniture pieces and tons of brand new PC parts. We're gonna try and build the ultimate YouTube gaming setup in this video. Make sure to click the timestamps in the video bar below to skip to the best parts that you wanna see. And we're gonna be going from step zero, step by step. So the first main job right now is to actually build a desk because I need a place to actually put the machine on and actually build a computer on because that's obviously the main step of the setup. Now currently I'm using an Ikea desk which is a combination of the Adil's legs with a set of drawers from Ikea. So I'm not really sure how they're going to be fitted if the desk is just going to balance on the drawers. But hopefully if we read the instructions right I can get it completely assembled. So this is the camera tripod which I got yesterday. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this camera on the tripod so I've actually got a better static point of recording because maybe I'll do a time lapse or maybe I'll do a full recording video of assembling the desk together. But everything in this video will be timestamped so you can jump to the parts which you most want to watch so if you want to skip the desk assembly and jump to different parts of building this gaming room then you can just jump to those in the video bar below boom okay we have the tripod all set up obviously when you do set a tripod there is some things which you do have to be careful of. so for an example i'm not sure if you can see it because it's a dark room but there is actually a bubble here which needs to be in the middle so you can tell that it's actually on level ground otherwise it's not going to be 100 percent still which is super important okay so we have the two legs here that need to get fit we only have two legs because i actually have a set of drawers to go on the other side but this thing's super heavy it's literally in about five or six different pieces so we're going to have to get these all assembled quickly. And this huge wooden piece, which is actually a lot longer than a four, which if I just put it up here, just for reference of how long this actually is, then technically that should be able to fit a computer, two screens, and maybe even a laptop, hopefully. This actually looks super nice. I completely forgot that I actually got the black top desk. I actually thought we had a white one. So this might actually look nice with a computer, especially because it has a black case. So it's gonna be the kind of same color scheme, but the legs are a combination of white and black. Oh wait, no, the legs are fully black. I think the drawers might be white. So not sure if this thing's gonna be multicolored, but I haven't actually opened the drawers box yet. So that's gonna be an interesting thing to do next. And since I have nowhere to put any of these screws, hopefully I won't leave any of the bolts anywhere because knowing me, I'll probably end up losing these, which is gonna mean that I can't complete building it. And voila. Okay, that box is pretty heavy. I think it's like 15 kilograms or 20 kilograms. It's basically just a full box of wood. It always looks so daunting the first time you open any new IKEA furniture. But for me, it's kind of fun because it's like a project. Obviously, the whole thing is do it yourself instead of just buying a pre-built piece of furniture. But I'm definitely going to follow the instructions because I do not want to mess this up. My dad never builds furniture with the instructions. But this doesn't actually have that many pages. So hopefully this shouldn't actually take that long because the legs you can just install in seconds just with one screw. But we have to build individual drawers and then somehow get the drawers to fit onto the backboard as well. So these are all the drawers. This is just the drawer system. And then if we go up here, where you can see the backboard, we're going to have to fit them into this. And I'm not sure if there's screws to actually fit this in, or if it will just balance on. But what we did is we used a build-it-yourself IKEA desk creator online, where you can select different elements to make a complete desk. So technically this should work. I did actually specifically order a screwdriver set just for this purpose, because I knew assembling a computer for one, where there's so many different computer components and also assembling IKEA furniture, I need a screwdriver, which I completely forgot to bring, but luckily I actually remembered to order it. So, as you can see, just open the trusty Amazon parcel. This thing is absolutely tiny, so I'm hoping this is big enough. I'm hoping the screwdriver is just very small itself, but the attachments will let me use it on most things. Because if this is a tiny one, then maybe I won't be able to assemble stuff, so I'm hoping this is the right size. So this is what it is. 
very small pack. And inside you can see the screwdriver through the actual bag. It looks pretty small, right? So let's just open this. And inside we have our trusty little screwdriver set. So hopefully this will be enough to actually build everything with. So if I just open this up. And plus, if this is perfect, this is great because it's just the right size. As you can see, we have all the different attachments along the top length. And I think the reason why the box is so small is because we have the attachment here, which can go in there, which I think is some kind of Allen key attachment maybe. And then also the main screwdriver head, which we can take out and just put any attachments in the front of. So hopefully, we should be able to get set up now. Somehow I woke up out in Beverly, fucked up, smelling like that bourbon. And I had a blue on the side, yeah, the girls in the light in the club every night. That's how it goes when you go to a person. Hollywood person. Okay, boom, that is the drawer unit completely built. So this is just a frame. Now what I need to do is I need to construct each individual drawer. So two main drawers have been made, which are exactly the same. I need to make three of a different type of drawer next.
Okay, so we have two types of drawers. We have the two small ones, and then these newer three bigger ones. So, the two small ones go in the top, which should slide in here. There's a few things we need to do though, because we do actually have to screw in some of these drawers, so the drawers won't actually fall out, which I'm gonna do afterwards. And as you can see, that's one drawer. They're actually quite a tight fit though, so it's actually quite a push to get that in. And then the second drawer, goes in exactly the same under it. Then we're gonna start lining in the other three drawers, which are the bigger ones. So like I said before, the actual desk piece doesn't mount or screw in the top. We have to put these weird plastic off pieces on the top, so they have to be symmetrical so the thing actually balances right. So hopefully it should still be able to take some weight even though we're not actually screwing it in. And then I just need to put one or two screws inside the actual drawers so they stop and don't just fall out when you open them too hard. And that is what it looks like fully completed. So now what I need to do is I need to fully construct and assemble the two black legs, which are the Adil's legs, which you should be able to see just over here on the floor. And then what I need to do is I need to screw them into the base of this big black desk called the Linmon. I may need to adjust the height of the legs though because I'm not sure if they're exactly the same height as the chest of drawers, which we've just constructed, because obviously it all needs to be the same level, so it's at the same height when we put it all together. So the desk is finally completed, so I've basically screwed these two Adil's legs into the main body. That's completely attached, so these will take the weight from the desk and support it well. But the only caveat of this is the drawer system's really nice. Obviously it's a nice distinguishing colour theme, white and black, but this is completely fine. The drawers work and they do what they need to do. I'll probably end up putting important documents in here and any things like camera bags and stuff, but there's no screws in here, it's just balanced by those sticky pegs which we put on before. So we can actually technically lift this desk above the drawers and move it how we want. That's a good thing but it's also a bad thing because I may need to move this into a more convenient position. Because right now, my bed's over here, but I might actually put the desk here. But since I need to build the PC on here, I'll probably have to do that after. But before anything else is built, we need to build the chair because obviously we're gonna need the chair when we're actually building the computer. But the gaming chair should be pretty fun to build. I've only built one before, which I gave to my brother. Hopefully it should be a pretty good quality chair.
and that is building the gaming chair. So now we have the chair and the desk, both of them in combination together. And tomorrow, I'm gonna have to build the gaming PC on top as well. Now there is obviously a lot of stuff to build along with this stuff, but now we've actually got the surface to build the PC on, the chair to sit at the setup, and there's barely any furniture left to add to this. Other than of course, getting the PC ready, add in all of the extra accessories like the game controllers, the keyboard and mouse, and also the two monitors too. We have the Canon G7X Mark III here, which has finally come, and I've been waiting for a brand new camera for a very long time. This is what the box looks like. This is the PowerShot G7X Mark III. Now, the reason why I got this camera is because I need a face camera for my videos. But unfortunately, when you plug in the HDMI cable to route this to the computer, it shows some of the on-screen elements on the Mark II. So that's why I bought the Mark III. So along with the camera, which you can see the review in the description below on my second channel, as part of this ultimate gaming setup, we actually need somewhere to mount the camera on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually open the next item in the whole list, which should, if I've guessed it right, should be the next piece of the puzzle, which I believe is actually the camera tripod. Now, the reason why this is so important is obviously when we're recording a face cam for the gaming videos in this setup, we're gonna need the camera to stay in a static position. The reason for this is obviously so there's no wobble and so it looks the best it can do in post-production when we edit it. Obviously, if someone just holds the camera or if I hold the camera, or bounce it on my desk, then it will just end up looking really bad. So, I've got a tripod, and we're just gonna take a look at the tripod, and I'm gonna show you it, and then we will set it up at some point in the room too. So as you can see, it's a pretty big box. This is what Amazon are always notorious for. And inside, we have this tripod, which is Samtian, which I've never heard of before. This is a professional photographic equipment tripod so this is obviously for the camera which we got which is the canon g7x mark ii so we are going to use this tripod and this will be what we're going to set up right next to the desk in the desk setup sequence when we move on to the camera side of things we need good camera quality good camera placement and also good audio for things to come together so this is an important part of the setup which will probably be located somewhere behind the desk so i'm gonna have to figure out the right height of the tripod and where we're going to mount it and where we're going to put it and with any setup, obviously we need a place to sleep. This is a pretty scuff setup right now. We just have an air mattress right here. We don't have a full bed frame right now, but I'm just gonna sleep on this temporarily for probably for a few weeks. But if you look around, we do actually have quite a lot of space to actually put all the equipment in for the rest of the video, which you can't really see on this phone camera. But if I walk back, the space is a lot bigger than the last room which I actually had. And the beast lives. Look at this, the fans are working. It was switching off constantly, but now it hasn't switched off. So I think I've actually got it to work. There was a problem with one of the USB headers being incorrectly placed. I think everything should be fixed now. So I'm gonna try and sell the monitors and see if I can get it to work. And this is the final look of what everything looks like set up. So we have the two monitors and we have the computer, which is now fully functional. Okay, so for the headphone setup, we have chosen the Razer Kraken, okay? So I'm not really a pro when it comes to headsets, to be honest. I've always bought a very cheap headset, which has had pretty bad sound, to be honest, in the past. The cheap headsets of Amazon, that's all I've really got. But I've always had a decent microphone, which was initially the Blue Snowball. But now we'll be upgrading to a new microphone and mix system too, which we're going to set up shortly. So these are custom tuned 50 millimeter driver headphones with cooling gel infused and they have a retractable microphone, which apparently is okay. I've heard my friend's microphone because I actually got these because my friend bought some Razer headphones and they were pretty decent and he knows more about stuff like that than me. I was thinking about getting Turtle Beaches, but I know that he had these before and they were decent. Honestly, I'm only picking these just for the quality sound so I can hear things in games. I really do not need to use this microphone because it will be pretty bad quality. So, I guess let's just take this out of the box. There's a little latch up here. I'm not sure how we actually open this thing. I don't want to break the box. This is one of those things where the box is actually really nice. Okay, there's a little seal here that we have to pierce. When it comes to opening boxes, I always get my trusty screwdriver and get one of these little sharp pieces here where we can pierce the front of it. I really love this special screwdriver set that I got. I got it to assemble this whole setup and it has not let me down so far. Right, so we've opened one side of the box. It's always nice opening something new just to show you what's inside the actual box. So these are the headphones. So let's take them out for gamers by gamers. That's actually kind of funny. Okay, so these are wired headphones, which is good. A lot of people like wireless products. I personally just like wired stuff. And you can see the microphone 
which pulls out like this and goes back in. Not gonna use that, but that's actually a pretty nice feature. Hoping these are comfortable to actually put on my head and listen to because earphones where they actually hurt your ears after a while. Not really one of my preferences, not gonna lie. Okay, there's some kind of wire here. I was gonna say, is it just me who always looks at the bottom of the case to make sure they haven't missed something? So this is some kind of audio extender. Is it just to extend it to go further? I'm not sure. Or is it for the microphone? Honestly, I think it's for the microphone because there's some kind of like red audio jack on here. So I think you need this for the mic. I'm just gonna plug it in anyway, just for the sake of things, because I don't want to leave stuff in the box. Okay, this seems pretty tough to lift up. I doubt they've left me any cheeky Easter eggs in the bottom of the box. Thank you gamers, for gamers by gamers. The Epic Gamers over at Razer have done a pretty cool job with those. So, Let's plug these bad boys in, right? I'm gonna plug these in the back of the case because who plugs earphones in the front, honestly? Okay, they work perfectly. So the wire is ridiculously long. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use those cable ties that came with it. Okay, boom. So we have some headphones working. Now we're gonna install some speakers. Like I said before in the last one, I'm literally never gonna use speakers. I just don't even bother with speakers. The only reason why I'm using these is if anyone else comes in this gaming room and they need to play some games, we're gonna need some sound, or if any of my friends come over, but for the most part, I'm never gonna use these because there's no point making noise when you have headphones. So, these are really basic USB speakers, so I'm just gonna pull these out. And there's literally nothing else in the box. It's just literally a manual. These are the cheapest Logitech speakers that you can literally buy. I think these are the cheapest model. I did actually used to have these, like, these were my first speakers. This cheap bubble wrap is not good. So these were my first speakers, but I decided to buy them again. And I think they were only like 12 pounds or something, which is probably like $15. So they're literally that cheap. So the sound quality is not gonna be great, but the fact that I'm never gonna use them is why I'm not gonna pay for expensive speakers. For dead meat, I want to apologize. <laughs> And they're working. Okay, next up, what's in the magical box? So this is another piece, what we're gonna be using. This is another mystery Amazon box, which I honestly can't remember what this is. But this stuff is all for the setup. I think this is actually for the microphone. I think this is gonna be the microphone mixer. I've never had one of these before, because before I had a blue snowball. So this is the Scarlet Solo audio interface. Some people call them mixers, but they're called audio interfaces. So we're gonna be setting this up along with a Rode Procaster microphone to get a little bit better quality in the audio because especially the Minecraft videos and the top tens, I've been using a USB blue snowball for a long time now, which is just not gonna cut it for the amount of subscribers we have. So hopefully this quality will be a lot better than before. So let's open this up and get this set up. And I'm sure there's some kind of arduous process we're gonna to have to go through to actually set this up 100%. We're gonna have to go through a lot of steps to get this set up on the system. And I'm not sure what the best audio levels are gonna be, but hopefully this should make our audio sound really great. So this is a USB system that basically you plug in and then you plug in your microphone via an XLR cable into this piece of kit. And then you can then use it to convert your microphone signal through to the USB from XLR to a readable signal for the computer to translate. So this is just basically like a converter and then you can set the levels and gain and improve your microphone quality by doing so. So first of all, I don't actually have the microphone unboxed yet with me, so I can't technically set this up fully, but I can take a look at the user guide and see what we can do. So what comes with the Scarlet interface is a little USB cable here that we're gonna relay into the system to connect it to the PC. So obviously if we spin this thing over, there is a few inputs on the back and one of them plugs into this micro USB here and that goes into the back of the system and that plugs in via USB. So I'm gonna put this here right in front of my speakers on the setup so we can control the audio when we want to. And I may even position it just to the side in front of the monitor so it doesn't affect us when we're playing games. And I'm gonna route the USB through the back of the desktop and plug it into the back. So as you can see, there's actually a green light on this now and there was also a pop-up on my windows that said the Scarlet Solo is actually ready to be usable. So we can technically use this now to plug in any input 
for an example microphones and there's also a dedicated headphone input here which we can use too. So let's continue our opening and unbox some more items which we're going to need for the audio setup. So next up is another Amazon box, honestly it's just been like Christmas just opening endless boxes. Not just PC components but just tons of Amazon boxes with random things. It's probably the first time in my life where I've ordered so many things that I don't even know what's coming at this stage. Which is good because it's a surprise but it's also a mystery. Okay what's inside? Okay, this is interesting. This is actually super important. So, this is the most important box. So the first thing we have here is the microphone itself, the Procasters. This is interesting. So we shall leave this over there. Then we have a windscreen for the Procaster, which kind of acts like a pop filter to remove those plosives and peas. So hopefully that should do its job. I've had pop filters in the past, but I didn't really like them. So it's nice just to get some kind of covering. And then also a mini HDMI to HDMI cable, which plugs into my camera. So this is gonna go in my desktop drawer, and this is just gonna be the photo and video stuff, which I'm gonna show later. And before, of course, we open the Procaster, I'm gonna see if there's some more boxes, because we need a microphone stand, first of all, to put this thing on, and some other accessories like an XLR cable, which I've ordered too, so hopefully that hasn't got missing. Okay, so let's open this final box and see what's inside. Oh, okay, this is a beast, right. So this is the Rode PSA1 Studio Mic Boom Arm. So this is just to attach the microphone to the desk, which is great because the last microphone arm that I bought have been super cheap. So hopefully this one will fit really nicely when we put the microphone on it. So I'm gonna show you the microphone first and put this box to the side and see if there's the XLR cable in this last package because that's super important, otherwise we can't even connect it. And I don't think the Rode Procaster actually comes with an XLR cable. So fingers crossed that in this box is the XLR cable which I bought. The trusty screw of truth. All right, let's open this bad boy. All right, what's inside? What's inside the magical Alice in Wonderland Narnia box? Ooh, okay. This is it, boys. Right, so this is another thing. For some reason I had to order two XLR cables because they wouldn't let me order one on Amazon. So, apparently I'm richer in XLR cables than I thought and I really just genuinely don't need these two. I only need one of them. Well, it's better than having zero. So let's open the Rode Procaster. Okay, so this is the microphone. This is the heart of the whole process. So hopefully this should be good quality, but along with the audio interface, you can pretty much make most high-end microphones sound decent. So I've listened to some of the audio quality tests, and the only thing that really matters to me is the fact that this is better than the Blue Snowball USB microphone. And I've only heard good things about XLR microphones, that they're a huge big leap and they're completely different to USB mics. So the fact that I've survived on YouTube for about three or four years with the same USB mic means there's promise, but this should be a huge upgrade. So the microphone's inside this bag. So I'm gonna just place this bag down. There's a 10 year warranty apparently, which is pretty cool. And there's an instruction manual. So I'm gonna go through the instruction manual just because it's important specifications. Then there's a shameless plug right here. I love Rode microphones. Not gonna be sticking this on my PC case because I already have enough stickers. And a quick start guide, blue ring. Okay, what's this blue ring? I've no clue what that is. Hmm, I don't know if this is some kind of meme or is this actually something which matters? Okay, let's open this. It's like they've sent me a little Christmas present. Rode blue ring. Right, what have they said about the blue ring? Blue ring quick start guide. Blue ring, if your mic cable is loose when connected, insert the blue ring into the microphone plug. Okay, great. Well, that was a very comprehensive and extensive guide. Thank you, uh, people at Rode. I shall utilize your blue ring effectively. And then this, some kind of bracket, I guess. Let's look into the user manual. So this is the Rode user manual. So thank you for investing in the Rode Procaster broadcast quality microphone. The Procaster has been designed as a no compromise microphone for the on-air broadcast use. It has a tight polar pattern and tailored voice frequency response. It's perfect for every application for a great sounding rugged microphone experience. So this is a dynamic microphone a cardioid polar pattern. It has a frequency range of 75 hertz to 18,000 hertz. Output impedance of 320 ohms. There's the sensitivity information, which is over here, because that's just so complex that I don't think it's worth just repeating the full thing. And it has a three pin XLR output connection, and that's about it. So it shows the frequency response, the polar response. It has a broadcast sound quality, high output dynamic capsule, low impedance, balanced output, internal shock mounting of capsule for low handling noise, 
internal pop filter to reduce plosives. So apparently this already has an internal pop filter, which a lot of microphones do, but most microphones pop filters inside don't really work, which is why most people get a secondary one. And it's developed and manufactured in Australia. That's actually pretty cool. So this has a 10 year warranty and we're gonna use the boom arm to put this on. So you should address the microphone at a distance of no more than five centimeters, which is two inches. It comes complete with a microphone stand mount, the RM2, which should be used to attach the microphone to a good quality stand. So we can attach this to the boom arm that we have. So I'm guessing this is actually the microphone holder, which is pretty cool. I didn't think we'd need this, but obviously the microphone boom arm which we bought probably will need an attachment so we will be able to use that always use a high quality microphone cable and then there's just warranty information so that's the setup guys so now let's actually look at the microphone in the bag itself so this is the microphone bag so let's just open this because i'm actually curious to actually look inside so this thing is actually quite weighty it's a pretty heavy microphone it has some cleaning powder in the bag which is always nice. Never had to use that stuff. I think it's just to stay in the bag and then just to keep it fresh. Okay. I'm not sure what this is. There's just a little tag that says Q&A. That just seems like another Easter egg. For some reason these people over at Rode are just leaving me tons of Easter eggs like that blue ring thing. Here we have the microphone. There's not really much I can show you right now because I haven't actually used this yet. But here is where we can plug in the XLR and we should be able to mount it on the microphone boom arm using that mounter attachment that they gave us. I guess we can now open this special uh, wind filter and I guess we can just put this thing on and hopefully it'll do something. I'm not sure if this is actually going to improve it whatsoever. Maybe it'll make it look more professional. But I guess we can sleeve over this wind filter and fancy that. Now we have like a professional boom arm microphone. That's actually pretty cool. And this is a really nice leather pouch. The road of scent as well that says road on it. You could use that as like a pencil case if you just want to use the microphone. It's basically just a school pencil case like what we had back in the day. That's actually so nice. That's going to go in the drawer because that's actually so nice. And I like to keep nice things. I don't like to keep everything though. Let us get this attachment out. So this is supposed to hold the thing. How on earth is this supposed to hold this? Just look at this thing. Do we unscrew this? What happens when we unscrew this? Okay. Maybe we put this bracket here and then we screw this back on the bottom. Okay. Right, so we've set on and attached this attachment buckle. And as you can see, this is what the microphone looks like now that we've assembled the dust filter and also the boom attachment. So we can put this box away for now in the graveyard of all the computer boxes, which you can see behind me. So I'm gonna put the microphone to the side because I don't want to damage this. And then I'm gonna try and unbag this microphone boom arm and see if we can get this baby cell. So if I just take the packaging off and reveal what's inside, they've actually packaged this quite nicely as well. I like it when people package stuff with a lot of packaging on. A lot of people hate on me when I sell stuff online because they always say that I use too much parcel tape. But honestly, using a lot of packaging just shows respect for the buyer because it shows that you actually put effort into making sure it didn't get damaged. Also, I don't know if you can read that, but it says caution spring loaded. They think that I'm going to hurt myself as soon as I rip this off. So I guess I'm going to have to hold this tight. Oh damn, they've taped this down pretty hard, huh? Okay, when they said spring loaded, they really did mean spring loaded. That thing nearly hit me in a, in a private place. Okay, then we have this, which will buckle onto the desk. Not really decided where I'm gonna put that yet. That's gonna be the only problem, figuring out a place where we can actually mount this. Maybe I'll put it on the left-hand side of the desk. I'm not quite sure just yet. And then we have a part box in here, right? What's inside this part box? Let's take a look. Let's take a gander. So this is some kind of huge metal buckle piece. Three main parts and a user manual. So let's read the trusty user manual because this is great for noobs so we don't break stuff. It needs to go on the desk. So I guess I could just place it on the right hand side where all the boxes and stuff are. So this needs to stand upright, okay? So the road logo needs to be facing upwards when we actually put this into the desk. And we have an IKEA desk, but it's mainly made out of like plastic and PVC. So we need to be really careful when we fit this because we don't want to actually break the desk. Because I caused some pretty bad damage with my last uh, microphone stand because it was on a wooden desk. So I think we should uh, be a bit careful where we're tightening this clamp this time. So we just want to screw it clockwise and loosen it. Then we should be able to fit it here on the desk over here. I'm not sure if this is a great spot. Okay, now if I move it counterclockwise under the table, we should be able to fasten this to the desk. It needs to be kind of tough because it's actually kind of weighty. 
It needs to be tough enough where it'll hold, but not too tight where it'll cause damage. Okay, right, we fit the clamp, we've tightened it on. It seems pretty straight when we rock it, that's the important part anyway. If you look at these diagrams on the bottom, it shows you what you should and shouldn't have it looking like. So we've mounted it via the desk clamp. So we're gonna unscrew this and then move this adapter. So hopefully the microphone will actually sit on this. We do have a little screw adapter thing. I think this adapter will actually work with a blue snowball. So if anyone's using like a blue or any kind of USB mic, I think that will actually work. And then I guess we just fit this into the desk. And it will extend like this, right? Look how crazy this is. Oh, oh. They were serious when they meant they were spring loaded, huh? <laughs> okay, I think if we put it upside down, this is like kind of how the professional look should be, right? If I just show you like where it comes from the side overwards and the microphone's kind of hanging down, it seems like you need to actually put the microphone on it to actually counterbalance it so there's actually some weight to it. So, as you can see over here where the microphone is, we're gonna try and actually attach the road onto it. And we had a little attachment segment here, which I think should work. I think this should screw in here, right? So can we just turn it? I should be able to just kind of screw this in. Right, okay, that's counterbalanced the microphone, so now it doesn't just wobble on its own. Then you can kind of tighten it where you want the microphone to be. So I could just talk directly into this, which would be pretty cool. So as you can see, now the microphone's kind of just drooping down. And then we can move the arm over here, move it out of the way, and move it into talk. So I think that's kind of like we're doing it right. It does block a bit of the screen space though, how I've set up. I may need to change the location of the actual mic itself. But for the most part, that's a pretty good setup. Okay, the only thing left to do is actually attach an XLR cable to it. So, if we just move this over away for a moment and just open up one of these XLR cables. This can just be any standard XLR. It really doesn't matter what XLR cable you have, as long as it's a good quality one with the right pins. I'm just gonna put that down there and move the road manual. And I don't think we need this. Still not quite sure what that, that is for. So in the comments, let me know below because I'm definitely not an audio professional. We should be able to use this XLR cable, one side, and plug it into the back of the microphone over here. And then plug it in via this side, which is the three prong connector. There we go, it's clipped in, right? That's the right side. And then the other side, which is the three pronged connector, which is actually coming out, that'll actually go into the audio mixer. So just need to extend some of this wiring by pulling it a little bit longer because we want these cable ties to be here because otherwise it's going to be absolutely horrendous. I'm going to plug this into the focus right, which is over here. And there we have the audio interface connected with a microphone. Do bear in mind, I'm probably gonna move the placement of all these things because it doesn't really look clean right now. This is just kind of like a test to show you how everything looks, but I'm probably gonna reroute this wire around the back of the setup so you can't see it and then probably route it back under the monitor into the focus right, because I think that'd look a lot better and more clean and less messy than it looks right now. If it's set up right, you will see that there should be a red light that comes on under the focus right. You might not be able to see it or any audio interface and it's under the 48 volt heading. So that means the microphone's being connected via XLR and it should be able to work. So now let's move on to some of the features of the setup. Now you can see with the wiring on this side, it routes around the back of the desk and underneath. So the microphone can move freely in and out without blocking or wrapping around the screen, which is really what's best. So even though this is primarily a PC game setup, controller gaming is getting more popular nowadays, especially with cross-platform support. So as you can see, we have some controller stuff over here. These are Xbox gamepad supplies for PC. So we have rechargeable wireless battery packs, which recharge via USB. Super awesome. Then under this bubble wrap or somewhere in the box, we have an Xbox 360 wireless PC gamepad. The reason why wireless is best is because rooting so many USB sticks gets a bit tiresome and also it just is gonna look much cooler on the desk. So, once we open this thing, we should be able to take a look. Now to me, this just looks way cooler than an official Xbox controller because it has like a custom design to it. And also I didn't actually know it was wireless when I actually bought it because usually I like wired things where you don't have to charge batteries. But after I bought it, I actually thought I'd still keep it because it's such a cool concept. Usually if I play Apex Legends or Halo, if I really don't want to put the effort into actually playing and try harden, then it's nice just to whip out a controller on Fortnite, Apex, Halo, and get that sweet, sweet aim assist, which comes with controller gaming. So over here, we have our controller setup. This is why I bought those twin rechargeable battery packs. I hope they work on this controller because obviously this is not official. 
but you can see it does have a normal battery pack on the back which needs to be filled with batteries i also have some aa batteries as well which i can fill that with and it feels pretty decent so it just has a guide game controller and it talks about it being wireless don't really know why i need a setup for that and now let's add these all to the setup and give you a full showcase the tripod's going to move around but i've actually positioned it behind the screen so i can actually use this camera that i'm using right now as a webcam but another thing which i have to do which i completely forgot to construct is this lighting kit so this will need to probably go in the same place as the tripod but this is a newer ring light set so this is yet another thing which we have to unbox and then i think that's literally everything unboxed so this is a lighting kit because obviously there's really no front lighting or face lighting which you really need when you're using a face cam in videos or when you're streaming so i'm gonna put this together and then put it behind the pc to have some kind of lighting source on the face. Now people choose different lighting sources. For an example, I used to use two soft boxes, which a lot of photographers use, but ring lights are used mainly for model photos and also a lot of makeup YouTubers use it because a lot of people like the sort of halo effect it gives you because when it shines on your face, it gives you a set of rings on your eyes, which look kind of cool, but it also is a little bit more of an unrealistic lighting source because of that. But I really liked how simple it was and the fact that most people run one light setup instead of two soft boxes. It's a less advanced way of lighting, but it takes up less space. So I'm going to set this up and position it behind the computer and then show you it. And boom, over here we have the ring light, which we can actually change the light on. This is actually really, really cool. Basically, what you can do is you can go to the back and there's a switch where you can turn it on over here, which is actually under the light. And you can turn it and it powers it on and it also dims it up and down. So basically, we can actually control the light levels of the light. Look how much light actually gets put into the room. If we just go over to the front of the desk, you can see just how much light's actually projected onto the setup. So this is more than enough for a face cam lighting. Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in. I could swear that this room has been running out of air and now it's starting to spin. You make me feel kind of bad, kind of good, kind of everything, yet it doesn't feel like it should. You make me feel kind of wrong. I swear I'm hitting the floor I could swear that my stomach just sunk a meter I'll be dead if I take any more 